being the first on rotations. And this is really interesting. I'm wondering if we're going to swap away from the fasting stand that we're actually going to see Karia uh, opt into just the regular support Nautilus, or if he's going to go. Yeah. As soon as he enters Fog of War, T1 do need to be careful. There's now Impact going in. Trial by Fire, I believe, down onto the Gwen now as well as Ona comes on over. Needlework is out there, flashes forward, and that's going to be first blood for Zayas, continuing his amazing run here at MSI. With the lack of vision and no defensive summoners available, big risk that you're taking there as Impact's going forward so far. And I was just going to say, T1, they can probably get some plates, but getting an actual first turbo looking rough as Guma. Yeah, this is looking rough as well. Chronicler is now Faker. He's got the Destiny Eye on top of him. Gold card comes out. The Piercing Darkness, not enough healing whatsoever. And EG fight back. And Guma getting taken down is a prize that EG is going to be very happy to take, unfortunately, for them overall trend. It continues a trend of the type of mistakes that domestically T1 just didn't really seem to make. Very in position, inspired, wrapping around as well. Looking like a bit of a 3v3. There's a flash over the wall and the pick comes in. Carrier locks down the kill after the Dawning Shadow does a lot of damage. The magical journey will be followed by absolutely everyone as Faker has got the inside track. The Cosmic Binding is amazing from Vulcan and Danny. Finishes off the kill, Arcane shifts out of the way of the hook, and EG will walk it out. Wonderfully done there by EG, the greed from T1 to go for that Azeus. Yeah, Impact fighting the Gangplank here, and the Needlework, that last one not landing. Dashing forward, let's see whether Zayas can win the 1v1. Trial by Fire is so powerful, and that will secure it. Solo kill. Wait, and I, I enjoyed it. Is, uh... T1 possibly in trouble yet again here as the Tempered Fate is going to be avoided. That is the smallest little uh, dredge line from Carrier and is obviously not going to be enough to get him out but to safety. Suffice it to say that Danny, he's he's feeling very well nourished. He yeah. doesn't necessarily like the Kaiser all that much. Tempered Fate is going to find Gumiyushi. Let's see whether this is a kill for EG and absolutely it is. Oh dear. Uh, I've read the script today. As Jojo Pin well can get out of the way of the gangplank, and our owner will be able to secure it, and uh, it is a uh, an infernal break. So Can't definitely much more fun. Drink. Definitely much more fun uh, than the cloud drink, but not necessarily my personal favorite. But I mean, uh, yeah, no, I don't. I don't have very many positives here. Zayas is going to test out his new hull breaker here. Kerry is going to ruin it for him. His tempered fate comes down. That is going to be Ona, though, in the back line, seeing what they can do. Cannon Barrage is absolutely fantastic and inspired, has to break his stopwatch to stay alive. Gumiushi now back with the team, and the Phalanx has been reformed. A stolen Tempered Fate comes down, and Bard gets a taste of his own medicine. Gumiushi picks up the kill to get some revenge. Shirley will go down, but T1... Very nicely to get out of the way of the Tempered Fate, a big tool now not there for EG, as that's a max range stretch line. Arcane ship from Danny, he flashes to get out of the way as well as Faker. Off to the side, the door. Morning Shadow will update down the Ezreal. Another dredge line comes through from Carrier, but the stopwatch is there Impact. for Jojo Pyon. It's not going to do enough as Faker just dashes out of the way. And Zayas is underneath the turret. He straight up does not care about that extra. And it might have been a sore point, which is unfortunate, but not the end of the world. But instead, T1, pick up the Baron. Well, Inspired's going to pick up the Drake. He's going to die, but they deny soul points. So I guess there's that Baron. You know what, that damage is overrated, Atlas. <laughs> we're, we're, we're utility gang planking here. Yeah, that's what it's all about. You know, you yeah. you, 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 you got to get all of those uh, safety items damage, first. Okay? Yeah. He has yeah, free yeah. items. He I mean, Trinity Force by itself is tons of damage. My friend David told me about that. As uh, T1, they do get themselves out of the way. Tempered Fate will land, but no follow-up is going to be available. Now they'll move themselves back. The Baron being utilized beautifully here as Zayas is going to take down the inner turret on the top side. Claims that. And now he's just a brick wall, denying EG any access to their topside lane. Another dredge line's going to connect as the Destiny does come on through. They're trying to take down Zayas, the barrel, the gangplank ulti, just absolutely massive. And Zayas, one versus three, will walk it out against EG. Ona's going to take down Danny now, and I think it's all over, but the crying T1 wandering into the EG base. And it fell close until it absolutely wasn't. Who needs bank plank when you can have tank plank? <laughs> Zayas gets up support and it doesn't matter at all. Because I think that's the play you need to look for as EG. Try to desperately find someone that isn't with the rest of their team. Pick them off and use that momentum. But unfortunately, wasn't enough. No, Gumiyushi going to try and get some revenge here against his uh, bottom side counterpart, Inspired. Yeah, he's going to be representing Rogue here as the Nexus goes down and T1 bounce back. Uh, 
after a difficult... But if you don't execute the team fights well, if you don't, are, uh, if you're unable to pick up any laning leads, either towards that Aatrox uh, or get the Callista ahead, it can actually be really hard to play late game against the. Because G2 navigating those later stages, finding those avenues of victory has been so, so good. So try and take as many of them oh. away in the late game as you can as Juhan almost dies to the Infernal Drake, Cut but on. he will. Jankos clearing out this Krog camp as, yeah, Kawink still unseen. As let's see, the knockup does come forward. Jankos making his way in. The call of the Forge God has come through and that's going to be used to try and turn onto Jankos here as Juhan is in the area. Crashdown comes through for the extra CC and there is so much of it. First blood goes to Kaiwing. Look at what Unified is facing here. Entire wave is going to go into the turret. So many plates going over. I don't think you've gotten enough yet. Oh dear. Caps takes the lease in for a walk. Uh, actual Drake stacking is not going to get them to a actual soul up until the... Oh, Bay. Yeah, Frozen Tomb comes down. That is going to be a free Q from Juhan as now he flashes, gets the kick to finish off the kill onto Caps. Safeguard to get himself out as Bay is going to be helpful there. Decent stun uh, loading. In, in 20 minutes, but giving over multiple Drakes and taking some of these kills to take out the tempo, the wind of the sails, G2 is really, really yeah, nice. Well, there it is. Magnus Storm coming through here from Kaiwing as the Fates call comes out. Flacken still trying to get these auto attacks in. Flash out from Kaiwing. They already have the Drake secured on PSG's side as Rocket Jump gets unified out of their caps, darting on in, trying to take down this Tristana. More pressure on G2. And they do have a gold lead, but I'm going to start to see... I need to see some of these turrets fail. Thank you, Caps. That would be lovely. <laughs> yeah, uh, he's right going to go time. back to his distortion. And that does mean that that... Uh, first, get the teleport out of Hanabi as well. So, yeah, a lot of tankiness to get through here. G2 are going to think better of it, but Targamus is going to look for that stun onto Kai Wing. He gets lit up in the air, but you can see the knockups. Now the chain CC, this choke point, not good for G2. There's the knockup. A lot of damage onto Caps. He's burning, but he is able to get out of there. Too, but they are looking to try and push that one forward as this Drake is spawning. Kaiwing spotted on the ward. Barrel goes down from Targamus as well as Caps moves his way up. Broken Blade. Um, Unleashed Teleport at the ready and can get himself in here if they would like. It's a really nice Everfrost. The Unified not going to be chained up. It does take an explosive charge worth of damage. Surely going to try and distract PSG. Is now Bane looking for his opportunity. There it is, the Magnus Storm on to three after the Frozen Tomb Unified. Can you get the free hits off the answer? So far is yes, but does it even matter? As that play is a little bit more well coordinated because Bay went in, I think, half a second too early. The rest of his team not actually able to follow up. The read of certain situations is depending on teams, depending on the meta, depending on the region. Uh, and I wonder if you put a different type of cost, a different type of analyst from the LPL. Well, it's G2 looking to return this favor. Is this turret relatively low? Caps over the wall. Fantastic Everfrost is the explosive cast. Not exactly the same situation as Bay flashes forward. They find the kickback as it's a great knock off of Black and almost surviving. He burns down at the last second. They trade. Callista for Lee Sin, but Broken Blade is still... It's now Broken Blade on the flank, but he is spotted out by PSG. Control vision absolutely everywhere. The Everfrost goes slightly wide there from Bay, but he gets snared up. Can't find his way into the fight. Now down to about 50% health. There's now Broken Brave back with the team. Juan looking to get rid of Caps, who's now moving back into this battle. It's going to be secured by Jankos, but can the fight actually be won as well? Unified finds a couple of Goomba Sons, and now they might be able to find their team fight. Broken Blade looking to get on top of him, but it's not going to work out. Caps gets flashed out of the way of, and he will not be able to secure the kill on the Unified, who blasts Goons back to his team, and PSG win the team fight. Pings towards the Baron, the Goomba now Caps. Desperately wanting to try and cause some trouble for PSG. He will spot them with the Scryer's Bloom. That's it me. is so difficult. One versus five, especially with the amount of CC available here by PSG. But Caps does have a fair bit of damage with the Void Stuff already completed. He has to watch as this Baron gets taken down. Target members of PSG unawares as Bay will be able to lock down the top outer turret. If it's this team that ends G2's win streak. Yeah. Like, especially considering G2's... Especially history. considering the fact that they did it! As uh, Targamus going to take a drink, look to clear out some of this vision. As G2 now on the back foot, trying to just weather the storm. 2.5k on the Red Bull Baron power play. 
And G2 now just trying to defend their base. And the big thing that you're looking for as G2 is a flank angle. A broken blade and Caps can get into the back line. That's your angle, but look at the well, free walks. It's hard to be just walking forward, looking to lock this one down. The turret is going to fall in now. Broken blade is taken down. Now it's the frozen thralls that G2 have to worry about as well. They're Two already it. taken down. PSG, can they just push forward? This is nutty. They've got five still alive. And they're like, late game composition? Nah, we're just going to win at 27 minutes as base flashing forward. Trying to dance his way out of the fight, but already they've taken everyone down. Caps is the last man standing, but not for long. That's the ace of PSG repeat history. The second Nexus start of the Nexus will be taken down, and G2 will lose their first Nexus of the MSI 2022 to PSG Talent. Team fight lanes is going to be somewhat mitigated, and that might put some pressure, especially with how aggressive Saigon Buffalo generally have played their early games. and. For Zhao, it's going to take a little bit of time before he's actually able to pump out that damage in getting the real lead as... Oh, Froggy. This is not yeah. looking good. This is real dangerous. Oh, There's the shield. shield broken. The flash forward, though, and uh, yeah, it's just an auto for the stun. Froggy's very dead, and Xiao who picks up first blood. Let's see who's going to be able to get the first real edge in this game. Outside of the uh, first blood. Uh, here shot. towards the top side is not going to be enough to save this one. Two towers in a row? Damn, Shelly getting some value here as Froggy has to flash against the strike. Yeah, Death Ray is actually yeah. a lot of range um, for the Victor and also being able to do so much damage with the Chaos does Storm. come through Not for today. our third. Yeah, sometimes you just don't get it as the Rocket Jump is going to be interrupted. There's the Fates Call just to mitigate the Buster Shot and that will be the kill for Gala so Yeah, it's just smacking an inhibitor turret and no one's coming to stop him. As Hexgate's going to be used, Wade trying to look for some sort of flank, as now Shahu is being cornered. He flashes to get himself out of the way, Shogun locks down the kill, but can they win the ensuing fight is the question. The answer so far is absolutely yes, as now Rocket Jump it. resets are coming forward. It's a double kill here for Shogun. Bin's looking to try and lock him down, and yes, he'll get that, but at what cost, Chronicler? And the answer is almost everything. Give up a Drake that they didn't need to, and... Definitely some life in this game. Breathe yeah, in. He doesn't have stopwatch, so he just gets blown up, and that's a big damage shot's gone. And Bin comes into the fight. I mean, he's Victor. Of yeah. course he is. BinJ walked into he the death ray them. that Xiaohu blindly threw into the brush, yeah. uh, which can't feel great. As another Chaos Storm goes down, Gwen unable to be damaged, though, but she can do the work herself. It's going to be baited out, though. Xiaohu with the perfect flash will avoid it. Bin also died. Uh, uh, I also think Froggy oh, is dead. Oh, yeah. Froggy's, um, it, it, this is going to be uh, very difficult to get out of. And by difficult, I mean yeah, impossible. Gala's going to be yeah, delivered very much hope <laughs> for Froggy to outplay it on Malzahar, unfortunately. Is there a timeline, I ask of you? Yeah, uh, well, I don't, I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't know. It's just, I don't just, think so. It's not quite, you know, like Caps' <laughs> Silas play where he can dash everywhere yeah, and do the yeah, stuff. Yeah. Like, you just don't really have access <laughs> to it. Play. Yeah, love that. Uh, instead, it's going to be RNG just straight up picking up the Drake here, uh, which oh, is uh, about Lich Bane on Victor and the amount of value that it has. Uh, as Hazmat's in a bit of trouble here, Bin is just looking to kill it. As he, oof, I was, it was almost Gwen things, but no. Nope. I need a moment uh, to process that. Yeah, no, you can, you can have one. I think you re re it. reasonably. As Saigon, uh, I, I do think the call is like, you, you're never going to be able to contest. We'll need to lock down the next one to guarantee the seven. So you, you were asking about the, the, the Lich Bane and want to go back to it for at least a little bit. Uh, in, in this game specifically, I think it gets more value than many si uh, LCK situations where they picked it up against like Corkies. And a lot of range, yeah. Yeah, uh, in this case, there is actually short range as RNG goes in. Yeah, Death Charge onto Froggy. He's going to mitigate it with his stopwatch. Gets underneath his Nexus turrets. There's the ulti as well, and immediately they blow up Ming. But the base is broken. The inhibitor will go down. Saigon Buffalo now have to chase after RNG if they want to kill anyone. They're not going to be able to. So, yes, they're a man down, but RNG do break the base. Minions? Ah, okay. They get the... Yeah. Which is no, nice. Good for you, Saigon Buffalo. Um, just got to win the upcoming team fight. Exactly. Well, RNG are going to make it as difficult as possible for them as Ming is back here with the rest of his team. Xiao throwing out these death rays, and it's another inhibitor just going down. Psycho Buffalo unable to actually find no any sort of fight that they're looking for as Solar Flare comes down. The last one remaining. And we'll see whether Psycho Buffalo do have any answers here. His shield's going to get broken. There's another 
Depth charge and dredge line. Decent knock up there, but BJ does go into the camouflage. It's just not going to be enough to save Taki yeah. though. Similar to last time. They can't contest this. Nope. There's no and way. Yeah. So that is going to be sold. It hurts. Especially when we were just talking about a specific other item that we would Wait. like purchased. There's now Froggy looking to grab Bin. Not going to be able to find the silence, but it doesn't matter if you can just press R. Counter-Strike comes down though, and Bin just walking this one out. The rest of RNG have now formed up, and the Gwen is very, very dead. Ming's going to break his stopwatch finally. Flash is to get himself out of the way. It is going to be the answering kill. Oh, very, very close to getting out. And now Saigon Buffalo trying to reform, but it is just not going to work. Some resets come in, but that is still going to be the ace, and RNG should now win this game. They took uh, the leisurely time, but in the end, RMG never ever really getting threatened. Bin took a full ultimate there from Froggy. He's just said, like, what are you going to do? Yeah, what look at the do? shirt that he bought. It's a really it cool no magic please shirt that he picked up. That force of nature working out. And the Nexus is going to fall. RNG now equalize in scoreline with G2. As Waiting? No. Okay. That's that's what we expected. You don't want your, uh, your double AD. People really love... You know, you gotta have that separation of damage types. <laughs> AD jungler almost always means double AP solo lane. Pretty massive. Faker moving up towards the top side. Ultimate available. Level six before bay. This is big. Hanabi, are they gonna go for the dive here? Looks like they're pretty confident. Juhan on the way, but they are not concerned. Gwen immune, dodging out of the CC, but not enough healing to come through. First blood coming into Faker, but they're trading back. It's a bit sloppy. Now Juhan wants to get one kill and get the reset, but doesn't quite have the space to do it. It works out okay, but a bit a bit messy there. Yeah, a little bit sloppy. I mean, it's the two for two, a base against the wave, but here we go. Now the full commit on the bottom side. Guma already so incredibly low. Unified stepping forward, and what is the Rift Herald? But if T1 are able to open the map up with this Rift Herald, like, use very Faker's different step. from what we expect from T1. Like, you look at them and already, like, four and a half K gold difference at 14 minutes, and, uh, we ain't gonna be hitting that anytime soon unless they start ballooning the gold with these kills. Well, Hanabi just burned his W, and that was a bad, bad time to burn the miss, because now he's just getting burned down. Needlework gives him a bit of healing, but not nearly enough to do anything there. Wave coming in as well. T1, Harold on the top side. You wanted them to balloon a gold lead, Dag. No, it might just happen. Yeah, I mean, that's the best way to start doing it, right? Get those kills, and then you get some turret plates. You've even got the Herald there as well, and that's the map pressure we're talking about for T1. Oh, and it's difficult for PSG because they're moving members up like they want to respond, but they're already so far behind the play. The Herald's already going to get the charge off. Maybe they can stop the second, but the tower's already down, and again, more money. I wouldn't be surprised to see T1 like start to swap their lanes around, like move Gumiyushi in towards the mid, and then you can start to move people uh, into the mid lane as well. Oh, kick goes over the wall, so they know owner's in the area. Howard Miss going down, trying to deny any potential follow-up. Owner flashing out to save. They want to take these fights later. Ooh, Guma potentially in trouble here, though. Is very much in trouble here. That's going to be the taunt. Easy CC follow up. No way out of that one. Does get a bit of damage back in return, but that's some for the uh, the Galio side. That's it. Losing your mid lane tower against a TF comp with the GP. Very, very bad. That's it. They're set focusing on Kylan. Kylan caught out off to the side. There is so much CC on this composition, but it looks like PSG are getting ready for a fight. Alti comes out. PSG debating. It looks like they're going to back away. We talk about always a way to start a fight when you've got a three item Tristana later in the game. Bait them in to maybe an uh, advantageous situation. But once the dragon lane tower. Might even be the mid lane as well because you've got uh, Callisto who's pushing in there. You've now got the. Gang. Previously turns even better here. PSG though, it seems like they feel like they have to force fight. They're immediately going in. The Wombos looking solid. Gumi Yushi off to the backside. Zeo, see if he can set up a perfect barrel. He might get something done, but it's not working out. T1, you had the 1 3 1, but you went for the fight anyway. Unified so low off to the backside of the fight, but they have not taken him down. But now the spears, they're starting to stack. Guma, can he finish this one? Zeo's so incredibly powerful. Bait, buying spice, space rather, for the rest of the team. Now going to go golden. Gets a little bit more room. Carry it forced away. The rest of the team now on the retreat. They might lose their mid tier 1 for this, but overall, kills in the favor of PSG. That looks so good for PSG at the start, but unfortunately Zayas comes in with the hero play to get Unified out of the well, He takes him out of the fight, and because Gumiyushi and Carrier is still there, the 3v4 is still too strong for Team. And look at that health bar. You're talking sub-100 health in that context. Ooh, stunned up. Leaps back to the wild card. Owner now trying to finish the job. That's going to be Owner kicking him out. T1 already advantage in this fight as we come back from the replay. See what else they can get here. Juhan down. The rest of the team ready, potentially. Predator now coming out. Looks like it's just going to be through Treat Hanabi. Dashing over the wall, throwing down the miss. T1, though, still ready for a fight, still going forward. Kaiwing already taking out. Hanabi in the midst of the entire team. The needlework doing lots of work. Unified, though, does take the Sonic Wave and get knocked down. It's clean from T1, and now that they've torn apart the front line, there is nothing left.
they knock PSG down. Hanabi, the last man standing, goes golden, but it's perfectly timed on the rent. Tower now to fall as well. Man, they keep sneaking by onto Unified and just taking them out at these crucial moments. And now T1 with the mid lane turret, going to be totally all right to start moving the ground again. And it's just hard. Of course, concerning for PSG, that's a whole breaker game playing. He's about one shotting the AD carry. Hasn't even have any crit. Yeah, that's the knockback though. Fight getting kicked off. Juhan already burning the ultimate. GP ult just to further isolate him away. Juhan, is he even going to try to go into the pit? Baron getting lower. Owner still staying focused on that one. It's a bit of a split call. Hanabi leaps into the pit. He gets kicked right back out. Carrier in the midst of the entire team taking so much damage. No ulti reset from the Callista on that one. Faker pulling out the wall axe. Sees here and there, and they've been willing to fight more and more. That said, T1 just setting up one more time. In the pit, Control Ward down. This one has been spotted. 6k getting lower. TP's now coming in. 3k getting lower. Kai Wing in the midst of the entire team. Galley Vault right on top of them. But who gets the Baron? The Baron is all the matters. That's the shutdown. Oh, Faker gets the Baron. But T1, are they just going to get routed into the pit? Already taken out. Zayga's looking for the barrel chain over the wall. Where's the gang? Quick barrel going to go. Looking for it, but he's not even going to go for it. And I like that they've just set Owner in the mid lane, though, as well, in the context of this one. Because he's just sitting there, ushering in the wave while the rest of T1 can move in on the bottom side. They've still got the luxury of the stun card to stop any priority access over the pit. I mean, this is great for Zayas as well. He's just getting to set up his barrels as he likes. Now you got Hanabi going. We need to get the flank. Going into the pit. Now it's a little bit more chaos. Nice Hexgate gaming, but owner's clean on the smite. Unified off to the side. It's been zoned away by the GP, but Zayas is completely out of the fight. If PSG can start a fight right now. I'm just watching Kai Wing. Every time someone steps close, I'm like, Kai Wing, you've got the flash. What are you going to do? And maybe they're going to go for it here. Oh. When burning the miss, though, very early on. Small window where she's quite vulnerable, and Carrier sees it. He's going to try to get this fight kicked off. Gold card goes in. The rest of the team now being split up. Unified, the kick has connected. Trying to create as much space as they can with the Galio, but now he's leaping out to safety. He's still standing, but TF can go in anywhere he wants to. Banger on the backside, just focusing on Unified. Unified, the spear from downtown. Guma finds his man and knocks him down. Juhan going golden, but T1, they've already taken the fight. It's a TP to the top side. They might just end this game. Carry is a beast. The Absolute chat going in, managing to get that moment of time where Gwen was not immune, and T1 would now expose the base of PSG Talon. And you wanted to watch Kaiwen, here he is in the picture in picture, Dagda. He could not find the engage, could not find the opportunity. <laughs> now T1 just moving in for the win. Mostly clean, mostly controlled, a few oopsies here and there, but ultimately proving themselves the better team, moving themselves up to four and two, keeping PSG down at two and four. Yeah, I mean, look, T1 had good control from start to finish there. We got those... Oh. Oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> All right. All so, right. we've got Broken Blade with the Yumi that wants to just go and pop off on the ribbon. You've got, like, at least a good matchup in the mid lane, but it feels, it feels like... It's like starting to win out there just in terms of individual XP. Yankos will get the Raptor camp. Does, of course, mean the way just moves down to the red buff and should take that one as well. Can't imagine that Yankos is going to fully commit to try to contest two and doesn't have the information to know if he even can go for the buff. Is Broken Blade getting a little oh. frisky there? That's not the tower shot that you wanted to take. Third Q comes through. Ben going in. Broken Blade barely able to walk away from that one. But now Targamus is in trouble. That's one dead cat. That's first blood on the bottom side. Min, yes, he's burning, but he's so far away. He's under absolutely no threat. Infernal early on, not huge value. But with no Herald on the table, they don't really have to trade anything for it. It's just a product of some of the uh, lane push and wave states that they've been able to build for them. Completing the darkness has vision advantage. I think he might just go for the crab here. No real reason to take a full-on fight. Can just block him up. But Flack is now coming up too. Wave potentially caught out instantly. They're just going to burst down the Lee Sin. It's clean. That was a boss when it comes to damage output and survivability. Yeah, I mean, that's the, the terrifying part about you being attached to anyone with Shehu. Caps. Kick back into the wall, get caught out and taken down. More than likely going to move down to this bot side with Gala pushing the wave to get a terror off the back of that play as well. Such a good play from RNG. That pick is coming at such an important on the back of this first tower, and there's really not a counter play. Broken Blade gets a little bit of isolated time. Yankos has to catch a witted uh, a lane in mid lane. But overall, RNG pulling pretty far ahead with that one. 1.5k lead. Yeah, and about 900 of that is on Gala as well, as you can see in the bottom of your screen. This guy actually 1,000 now on Gala, so a huge amount, as you said, on the RNG bot laner. And Yankos trying to see if he can make the play towards Caps. Shahu, no ulti available, does have the flash. Caps, of course, no TP. Flash Ignite on this along, so a bit more kill pressure. Yankos fully committed to this one. Flashing it, not giving Shahu any time to react. A little bit slow on the trigger there. The Ignite already ticking down, but Lee Sin with the safeguard. I mean, there's only going to be the one for one in the end. It was so close to being so nice, but that charm just stops any sort of follow-up coming through fast enough. I'm away over the wall. They're able to turn that one around, but Caps now, we'll have to see as he pushes this one in. You can already see movement here from Ming towards top side. I think Caps needs to go and cover this. Yumi on the way in, looking to mount up here. Broken Blade, 
Level 10 has to be careful. Ming on the way in needs to dash his way out of this one, but he's already got the charm prepped and ready. Broken Blade just running away. There's nothing for him to do on this one. Can try to get tricky. Alco Gaming not going to be enough. Gala grabbing another kill. Right, and that's flash the flash W from the Viego in the mid lane, but across the board, it just feels like RNG are consistently making the more advantageous plays. That said, Caps tries to make a bit of a difference here in the mid lane, gets the ult out. But such a different uh, feel from the last time we saw these two teams face off, right? We looked at the early kills. Oh, wait oh, a Caps second. Caps vision for the Ooh. all, and that man knows his damage. He has to use the clone to body block the Q. Nope, gonna connect. Way gonna grab the kill. Caps taken down one for one in the end. There it is. Yeah. Lines it up and uh, credits away. Two, one, and one. Making his presence down on the map, stopping Caps. Complete control over the Cloud Drake here. All he goes across, but really no recourse here for G2 at this point. Can maybe fish for a few picks. Again, Targamus strapped to the back of Caps, a terrifying prospect. Single piece of CC connects, though, and things are gonna get pretty hard. Caps now leaping out to safety. Targamus using the ulti, but with that cooldown down, it might be a little bit difficult. Ming locked up for a brief moment. Ben, the entire team now looking to collapse. Moving to this funnel could be difficult. Caps still stepping forward, still fishing for a little bit more. Gala coming down. The entire team grouped up. Caps just trying to find any sole member well, to pick up. Potentially with Ari on the top side of the map, as G2 will funnel resources into Broken Blade, making sure that he can get this bot terror. Ooh, Ben. Going for it. But again, the exhaust is so important here. So many summoner spells being traded back and forth. Caps still standing, outplaying, outmaneuvering, but no, the mist making it work. Targum is now going to be in trouble. Broken Blade on the way down. Bin still standing, but mid lane tower is already down. G2 over committing on the play means the second charge is now going to come through. Way waiting over the wall, too. No minion wave means they cannot clear the second for RNG, but no, Ming caught sleeping just for a brief moment. Did not expect G2 to be waiting there for him. Yeah, now G2 might actually be able to get a little bit more pressure. Is uh, RNG are sticking around in this mid lane to get the tier two, but gonna call off the play in the bot side and see if maybe they can cut off RNG's escape as we broken in the lane. darkness. But as cool as that oh. play looks, Caps now in trouble, gonna get zoned away. Ming, there's no way Caps gets out of this, and the rest of G2 they don't even have any recourse. They see Caps using it so well here. Certainly, as we're all coming across as well. But again. It's always costing them something. They are going to get priority access to the Drake. They're going to get their second Drake of the game, no question. Hard for RNG to contest this one, but you've got two members on the top side of the map. Bin and Xiaohu pushing in. Broken Blade going to respond on the bot side with a tier two of his own. So for now, it could be an even trade, but he's going to be forced away. It's going to stop them from taking the tier two. G2 will get the Drake in exchange. Ming and Gala seem ready for a fight. Yankos and Flack are potentially in trouble here. Way on the way as well. TP coming, this is gonna be bad if G2 can't make it out of this one. Flack at Fancy Feet already using the flash way, kicks him right into the wall, knows the follow-up is there, takes him out. Caps, target Last a sick League of Legends. Just get the small advantage, go back for mid control. They're waiting in the darkness to set up a pick. G2, if they get overconfident here, are gonna get burned down. Caps dashing out to safety, Yango's unstoppable, but he doesn't make it over the wall, it's a disaster. Gala now on a rampage, RNG with enemy jungler. G2, what have you got? 11k, getting lower. There's no spell book, there are no miracle smites, they have to go for the fight. Alti coming out early from Gala. Gives him a lot of space to work with. Eyes on Broken Blade, eyes on the ribbon, leaping into the pit. Baron getting lower and lower. Who's gonna take it away? Lee Sin gets it, it's so low, it's almost disaster, but they managed to make it work. Bit going golden. Xiao Hu Ming off to the backside. Ming burning down. Flacket getting cut down by Gala. Broken Blade, the last man standing. Yumi strapped to his back, but maybe, just maybe it's possible. We know the power of a bruiser with a Yumi on top. Broken Blade, how clean can you be? Backing away instead, giving up this Baron feels so bad though. Maybe, just maybe he pushes for more, but instead shifting his attention towards the maybe they can fish for picks, but RNG have not been giving them anything. Oh, Gala. Gala off to the side though, isolated. Gala is his ulti back up. Caps now trying to retreat back to the middle of the team. Everyone pulling back now. Caps has been locked up. Caps has been isolated, but another distortion comes up just in time to stop the follow up. Yankos body blocking the queue, going unstoppable over the wall. RNG pushing forward, and here comes Bin on the backside. The Gwen maybe to finish off the LeBlanc. Caps dashing away. Ming dashing in. Flacket trying to retreat. All of G2 just running for their lives. The needle were coming out. Xiaohu finding the kill on the Flacket. G2 picked apart in their own jungle as RNG will look to push down the mid lane. And with the battle for first there, RNG know that they can take that top spot as they chase down Caps. Gala is feeling himself. Gala stepping in. Caps can't distortion away. Gala now godlike. Broken Blade. Last hope. Him and Yankos. What can they do? RNG pushing in for the win. 5 1 record staring them down. T1 waiting hungrily for G2 at 4 and 2, looking for a bit of revenge, looking to put themselves up in the days to come. Broken Blade into the midst of the team. It's a five man stun. It's big, but it's not going to be enough. They have too much CZ to lease in the immediate kick out. Broken Blade, he wants to do something. He wants to take down Gallo, but he cannot finish the job. Targum is the last man standing, but he has no hope as RNG tear G2 apart, systematically dismantled. G2 cannot find any advantage in this game as RNG push in and end it in their favor. 8-0 and o for Gala at the end of that game. We talked about how he could be someone that could take... Alistair from headbutting you out of a fight. And it feels like Alistair 
in this game on his own, as long as he knows where the cannon is, will always have a way to push him out or for stopwatch itemization. Jojo already on the way. Jojo Pin's already on the way. They are not oh, they interested know. in giving this objective up. They are ready to fist fight for this red buff. BJ. Impossible to spell shield the combo. There's two spells now. BJ is gonna be in trouble. The exhaust now taking BJ gonna be forced out. No, sticking in the area for now. Red buff has reset now. Inspired on the way out has turned invisible. Danny now moving up. If they can get a kill onto this Kaiser early, it's gonna be big. Baby Cage stops any further aggression, but the red buff has been secured, Dag. The mission accomplished for EG. Yeah, I mean, look, EG managed to get the red buff. They also get uh, low health bars on the Saigon Buffalo bot lane. So actually look at Danny and Vulcan here, right? They get to push in that wave. They're going to be able to reset and get a nice little bit of shopping done for themselves as well. So uh, you're kind of getting those advantages on the bot side thanks to the low health bars in Saigon. Certainly. I mean, no heal. Got Flash Cleanse still up on Danny, so easy to force a fight if they want to. Yes, Vulcan does not have an exhaust anymore, but still has a Flash. They can still make these big plays. Fired waiting over the wall. Looks like they are going to go for the back cancel, but it was all a bait. The baby oh. cage, it'll stop them, but not enough. The flash comes out from Inspired to finish the job. We First, to get a little wild. We wanted to get a little crazy. Froggy's not ready for this one. He's going to get locked up. Knockdown comes, and he's in the middle of the cage. That's not where you want to be. You're stuck in there with him, Froggy. You're stuck in there with JoJo. Now stepping in, though. BJ looking to turn this one back. Maybe he can lock him out. No, stun now coming in. That's going to be the Silas W. Massive healing. BJ desperate to finish the kill. He's going to get one back in exchange. Will they finish the Nocturne? Yes, it's just a matter oh, of no. Bug. The creeps? Oh, are... The trade pool? What? The creep? Oh, <laughs> get in the dog emo, Binja. <laughs> oh! Execute to the tower? I, I, is Does it, it going to work? Oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> it's two, you can say math. That's yeah, also yeah. fine. Engage yeah. on the bottom side. Vulcan talking now locked up under tower. That's going to be big. Danny, again, had the cleanse for that exchange. Vulcan, Hex Flash Enthusiast, it's safe to say. Froggy has to be careful here, but here comes the Nocturnal. They're going to try to lock down the level 5 Alistair. He's so incredibly squishy. They see their opportunity, they take it, but now they're getting fired back on Silas and instantly steals the Leona ult. And now they're coming in, and Pax is going to make it to this fight first, but who is going to make it out? BJ not escaping this time. Taki now leaving, but... I Get feel to the like minions, impact. Taki! Get to the minions! They'll save you, the wolves! Oh! Unironically, the wolves... Wait. <laughs> Uh, no. No. No way. Yes. Wait. What? What? <laughs> See, okay. Cannon's pushing no. in the wave. He can escape. He's get to the minions. They can't get keep the getting away with the Dacta. <laughs> Taki's great escape. No. Oh, Taki no. bad. Back to your cannon. <laughs> no, he's gone. Yeah, it's a phase rush, Alistair. It's just who gets the kill at this point. Yeah. I think it's probably Vulcan. Vulcan gets the kill. There you go, Vulcan. Yeah. I mean, look, he was trying to mind game. Adjusted yeah. how, how to much cover is that fence? entrance. How much is a fence in League of Legends? <laughs> it's hard, you know, difficult to say. I gotta say though, like for Saigon, this isn't actually going terribly, right? I no. mean, yes, they are behind the kills, but you look at the gold, they got advantages in the bot side of the map for them. And although the mid lane has been a bit of a fiesta. Danny now oh, in trouble, sorry. Danny should go down. No magic escape this time around. Froggy to take that one, get a little bit of extra AP. Vulcan now coming back to the top side though, can't just knock Hosman. Down. Gonna go for the knockup first. Goove around him. Phase rush now. Procti runs in. It's a wombo combo. It's all the CC you can ask for. Hosmet, no alt for any fight to come. Gonna get finished off. Will not escape from that one. His Nocturne is on the way, and things are about to get dark and scary. Here comes BJ with a little lone scare prize. Now locked up. Jojo Pew, no way. Starting to go. The baby cage is right there. Shut down, and that is the power of the Vagar. So hard Mission to maneuver. EG overextending in towards their jungle and cutting off any sort of escape. Yeah, and remember, for Saigon Buffalo, it looks like dire straits when it comes to making it into top four. But for EG, hope is very much alive. It's a neck-and-neck -neck race with the PCS right now, with PSG talent. But that will all fade away if they lose a game here. For now, though, moving in onto Shogun. Taki in the area. They've got the man advantage. Shogun, no real way out of this one. Just trying to finish off Danny, but will not get the chance to do so. Meanwhile, on the top side, Impact trying to come in clutch. Summoner Spellbook doesn't look like he has any summoners. Other summoners up and available, but both these champions with their ulties down. Impact with the health advantage. If he can push this wave and he can get something done. Can't see the mini map, so not sure who else is in the area, but for now it's Harold on the bottom side in favor of EG. Hosman forced to back away, but here comes JoJo. Quick kill pickup, quick Harold crash on the bottom side. EG just like that, even up the gold. Yeah, nice little passage of play from EG. to get the big bot, they get the turret plates onto Danny, and even JoJo moving up to get that kills. And you're not really getting a response here from Saigon Buffalo, right? You still got BJ trying to farm it up, not really in a position to try and answer for a lot of this. this is Taki? Maybe, no flash. Supportal combat, he has the flash. Here comes the Nocturne, yeah, that can't, nope. No out playing that one, well played by Binja. Sure. Will he be up in time, oh, two seconds, moving Look down. Vulcan. BJ definitely overstaying, and again, spell shield great for everything but Alistair combo. Is just gonna walk along with him, knock him back into the team. Hosman on the way down, but there is no play to be made here. 
big shot. He's fighting. They need to take out JoJo fast and early. Yeah, I mean, JoJo's just been doing such a good job of getting these last few hits onto picks and side lanes, right? And unfortunately there, BJ, as he said, sticking around that bit too long. Begins to get dragon towards uh, EG. Yes, Froggy will get the tower top, which is nice to get some gold back in favor of this. Uh, happily clear out this wave. Saigon trying to zone them off, but shouldn't get the terror here. Ooh, might just try to brute force it. This is some raw determination. Jojo Pion stepping forward. The team is split. They have to be fighting for control of this area. Taki very deep in enemy territory, though. Saigon Buffalo feeling pretty confident on this one. Stealing away the Nocturne all this big, though. Taki, if he gets spotted here, could just get leaped on in an, or leapt on in an instant, rather. TP now coming in. It's going to be a full on fight. It's a brawl in the midst of everything. Jojo Pion perfectly in the middle of the cage. There goes the cannon ultimate. Big damage coming down or not. Perfectly timed stopwatch to make sure that he doesn't take too much on the backside. That said, still more than enough to finish the job in the long run. Impact caught in the cage. Froggy taking his time. It's going to take a long time to burn down Impact, but the same will not be said about Shogun as he falls. BJ also falling on the backside, inspired stronger in the 1v1 overall. It's a messy, messy fight, but EG, four members standing strong as Froggy and Hosman are on the retreat. Oh, the sad Zoe, the absolute BF. Vigar, no more cage to keep him safe. Big shutdown to the side of Impact. EG, monster that fight. King Elkar at the start. And obviously, the cleanup to be expected final moments. That's just the power of the unit. And again, I think your best bet is to have Jojo Pune kind of off towards the side, but he is grouped here with the rest of the team to make sure they can use that Very engaged to try to force again. That said, does get harder as Kennen gets stronger, but Hosman not getting a chance to play in this fight is getting isolated. The cage comes down. Ornald has already been He's used. But Jojo try and be a big carry here with the Wukong. No. Vulcan. He's going to go for it. Inspire can just instantly come over the wall. Major, there's really no way out of this one. You can turn the lights off, but it will not. flow. Obviously, 0 5. Now, haven't had the best of times, but you can never really count out this team. They're just so aggressive at times. Certainly. Uh, it's the story of the BCS. A lot of people have doubted BCS in the past. It has not always worked out well. Knockup coming in, though. Getting the cannon out of the fight before he can use the ultimate is brutal. EG, free access to the bottom side of the map. There's not even a recourse Baron here for Saigon Buffalo to try to start up. So, EG. Having their cake, eating it too, really getting everything that they could want, and Hosman cannot afford to get caught. If there's not a cannon ultimate in these fights, Saigon Buffalo don't really have any way to re-engage a fight. This dragon completely and totally uncontested, moving up to Mountain Soul Point. And let me tell you, for for Kennen, alongside the cage coming in from Froggy, stolen smite for Froggy. Oh. He is ready to contest an objective if necessary. Jojo leaping in immediately. The fight kicks off. They are not afraid to pull the trigger on the side of EG. Inspired. Now going godlike. The CC denying him any access to the pit. Taki and Shogun stepping forward. 2K getting lower. There is no way they steal this one. EG grabbing the Baron, moving their gold lead up to about six. Like Vulcan again, wonderful engage onto Froggy. And Fiend James, he picks them off. But I mean, you're in a close quarters fight against an Alistair. Magic resist coming in. EG slowly pushing their event forward. Actually breaking the base will be difficult. Vigar, obviously, insane wave clear. But, uh,. For now, just taking all these tier two towers as is to be expected on the first Baron. Two minutes and 30 seconds. It looks like they're gonna try to start the fight off. Froggy flashing away from that one. EG just getting the second tower, getting Froggy's flash as well was big because the soul fight either. So there just are not a lot of avenues for them to attack at this particular moment. They have to send someone to respond to Jojo, but it feels like they just don't have the resources. Instead, they're gonna try to start the fight as Jojo's off to the side. Nocturnal now coming out, but no, the Wukong simply too strong. Stops BJ from getting in. Flash through, now Hosman trying to respond, but EG, they are too powerful. Jojo Pune still standing, goes gold, and Taki wants to finish the kill here. Froggy off to the side, but the Vanguard just doing nothing. As to watch as it's the one for one at the end of the day. Jojo taken out of the fight. The tower still stands. So all things considered, not bad for the side of Saigon Buffalo. Yeah, I mean, Danny just talking smack from between the legs of Impact. Like, looking like a child between Dad's legs. <laughs> just kind of going, come at me. Like, you can't hit me. Impact's here. Go. Impact trying to start another fight, too. Froggy going to get knocked up, going to get knocked down. Do they have the damage? Danny, no room to follow up at the tower. Now gone. Inspired breaking another tower. Danny trying to finish it off with the Akathian Rain. Impact still going. Inspired posting instead on the inhibitor. Is Impact just such a beefy frontliner? Nobody can break through that health bar slowly but surely, chipping him down. He'll dash away. The inhibitor, though, still standing. They're going to lose two towers on this one. Impact should fall. Vulcan now trying to push away Hosman. Vulcan should drop as well, but Danny now just shifting his attention. Good heads up play to move, move in and make sure he could take down that kill yeah. anyway. The good news is they didn't lose more. But now you're facing down a Mountain Soul. Jojo might also be basically unkillable, and Danny does a ton of damage. If you ever make a mistake, that's going to be the engage. Forcing out a little bit of defensive CC in the form of the spell shield. But Froggy already down before the fight even starts. Inspire leaping onto the back line, shredding them through. Inspire interrupted on the dash in. Hosman trying to go into the backside. He just does not have the damage in the face of the Mountain Soul. Saigon Buffalo are powerless. EG so far ahead. Wiping the floor with Saigon Buffalo is their final push should just end this game.
Yeah, 3-3 three, three now for EG as they will be able to take down the Saigon Buffalo. Just waiting on this wave and nicely done by the North American representatives able to take the victory against the VCS. And I like it. Once they got control, they played clean, they played controlled. They know that even if Saigon Buffalo are 5 still have to take your time. Not flawless by any means, but 3-3. Three, three, that much closer to locking in the fourth seed.